Good morning. Welcome to today's webinar. My name is Joshua. I'm going to be your presenter today. It's promptly 11:30 here. Accounting reporting. So, you know, as I've been kind of developing these, I did the one on donations, you know, a week or two ago, a couple weeks ago, and we're doing the one on accounting today. And you know, I think one of the things, you know, as we're trying to approach how to to deal with these, you know, these. We have 20 minutes, essentially, to try to get through as much of this and try to help folks understand as much about the reporting as we possibly can. So what I always say is I use the word conventions a lot. Church Windows uses the same reporting conventions. You know, so we've got menus for reports up here. So we go to reports and export under financial. We've got balance sheet, fund activity report, treasurer's report, transaction a list. We've got check register, deposit slip, general ledger, transaction journal accounts receivable invoices and statements, worksheets. We've got accounts payable, accounts receivable reports. Um, the uh, list chart of accounts reports, summary of cash activity, trial balance. So that's where they're listed. We do also consider printing checks, 1099s in accounting and exporting a report option. But the report and budget, of course, there's a budget report as well. But the main reports are listed up here, or they're in the reports here for the multiple report groups, okay, which we're really not going to cover today. Uh, but, you know, up here, the big three that we're going to talk about, you know, on the next webinar are going to be balance sheet, fund activity report, and treasurer's report. Those are the ones that we typically recommend for meetings. But certainly, if you're wanting more transaction or detailed reports, you're looking under transactions or more worksheet type reports, we're looking at, at those that are listed under worksheets, okay? Um, and again, the other report options, budget, you know, printing checks, 1099s, 1096s, and exporting. But we're gonna talk about basically the reports under the, the three here, financial transaction and worksheets, okay? Because these are the ones where that you have the re greatest reporting or, or formatting capability on that, okay? So the first thing that I kind of talk about on here is if I go into something like my balance sheet, you can literally run an account, a, a report for any accounting year while remaining in the current year. That is so commonly overlooked. If I'm in my balance sheet, I click in the accounting year menu, look, all my previous accounting years are here. That's true about any report in accounting. If I go to transaction and go to something like general ledger, accounting year in the upper left, all of my accounting year history is there. I do not need to change the year in order to be able to run a report for a different period, okay? Just look for that financial or accounting year menu. Same is true under worksheets. If I go to, you know, trial balance report, accounting year, you literally can always run a report for any prior year period without changing out of the current year, all right? Second, most of all, most reports have tabs of some kind. This is, again, what we kind of discussed in the donations webinar a couple weeks ago, is look for the tabs. Some reports have an option tab. Most reports will have a columns tab. In some cases, it might be called like fields or something, okay? But depending on the report. Many reports will have a custom account groups tab. Virtually all will have a fonts tab, of course. You can have the ability to be able to control the fonts, okay? Many reports will have options, have an options tab, okay? But again, with kind of addressing the sort of way that I was talking about it before with regards to convention, the options tab is a convention, but what's on the options tab itself for each report is what's going to be different. And that's what you've got to really look out for and kind of familiarize yourself with in terms of what it is you can do, okay, what you can get out of that report, okay? Um, some reports may have just a couple of tabs. Some reports may have lots of tabs, okay? When they have lots of tabs, like if I close out of, say, the uh, treasurer's report options here and I go to something like my transactions and transaction journal, notice we've got filter, custom account groups, group and sort, columns, fonts, and vendor payee tab. What that implies is there's a lot of output or a lot of information that you can filter on this report 
and potentially information that you can get out of it. And that is most notably displayed when we look at our columns tab on most of the reports. Notice here, look how many fields we've got available or how many, well, we currently have showing up under visible columns under our transaction journal. And we still don't even have all of them under what if we look over at available. Under available, we still can and could include batch code, reverse, corrected, debited, you know, or uh, the number of files option on it, okay? So the you have to become familiar with navigating these, okay? The columns tab is as simple as going, oh, okay, I don't want to see the deposit slip column here on, the, on my report. I simply either double click on it or if you do, you know, you highlight it and you click either the left or right facing arrows in the center to add the columns back and forth between available and visible. Okay, that, that's true whether you're in membership, donations, accounting, or payroll reports, folks. Again, reporting conventions that are behave in exact act the same way in every portion or every module in the software. That's how columns are added to and from available and visible on any reports anywhere in the program. So that's what I mean, kind of meaning about the report conventions themselves, okay? Um, you know, many reports will have a group and sort tab, okay? So an example of reports that may not have quite as much, and honestly, the transaction journal does offer enormous reporting capability in terms of what you can get out, and notably on this, using this tab called group and sort, okay? Um, we kind of looked at that a little bit on, the, on donations a couple weeks ago. But other reports that don't have as many tabs, and an examples of that might be something like under like our deposit slip transaction. It serves a very specific purpose. We notice there's only an options tab and fonts, and that's it. The deposit slip literally only reports on deposits into our asset accounting question uh, that we select for the particular date that we enter it for, okay? So again, not many options in terms of what you have. So the, this report reports on very specific information. Meanwhile, Transaction Journal reports on something that allows you a, a good deal of options for how you want the output to look, okay? Another option with, with limited selections for, for tabs would be something like our fund activity report. Again, a report that reports exclusively on our funds. So we have options, columns, fonts, and funds, okay? Very specific report, okay? Um, yeah, and that's, I mean, that's kind of what I was including. Many accounts, accounting reports report on specific accounts and information. So again, our treasurer's report and balance sheet are, are just common examples of that, okay? But you've literally just got to dive in and play. And I said this on the donations event as well is folks, if you can break these reports, if you can generate an error when you do this, exploring these, then we need you to call, I need you to call me so you can tell me how you broke it and then I can get my programmers to fix it. But, and please don't hear me, that's not a challenge. I'm not challenging you to try to break it, but I am challenging you to go in and explore the reports and and play with them, you know. Notably, things like, and I'm gonna, again, I'm gonna kind of go back to my transaction journal just as an example, is, as I said, under the group and sort tab is where there's enormous power in this report. You know, I, I get a lot of calls from users and they go, well, Josh, my donations totals for a particular period or for the year don't match my, my donations transactions in my accounting module, how can I, you know, look into that and deal with that. Well, when I go into something like my transaction journal, I can ask for, say, only donation transactions. I can go to group and sort. I can say date occurred, group by field one, totals only, and when I click print, it will detail all my donation transactions or donation batches by date. So I could cross-reference that with my, say, uh, log report or my, you know, reports and donations that are also totaled by date and compare those to the totals that I'm seeing here, crossing them off, okay? If I don't want to say group by or totals only and I just group by date occurred and I click on print, 
notice it brings in date occurred. It shows what the donations were and what accounts were debited and credited. Okay. Again, lots of power. And you've got the same kind of power under the uh, filter and sort or group and sort tab under something like your donations log report as well. Okay. But again, there's a lot of options and reporting cap capability on this report that you might not have on others as well. Okay. There, the columns are saved based on your username and log on to the software. So if you have your own log on to church windows, it's going to remember whatever columns you last selected. Okay. When I'm here, like, you know, I, I have, I have selected donations on my, at my, while I've been in the transaction journal here, but as soon as I close out of the transaction journal and I go back into it again, it will reset all of my transactions, but it will remember the columns that I've selected and the order. The transaction journal is the only report in accounting that has this option down here labeled save selections as default. So if you do have some selections of the transaction journal that you prefer and you want to keep, this report allows you to do that. But I exert, you know, I advise that you exert caution around that. If you don't like your selections, you can always either just click clear filter and it'll just reset them, but you'll want to ch recheck save selections as default in order for it to remember that you want all the transactions and no dates to be selected. Okay. I report something like the transaction journal only reports on the year that I'm selecting. Okay. Accounting reports don't cross years. Some reports will permit you to be able to show previous year information, but it is only going to be the prior year to the year that you're running it for. Okay. So those two reports are the, the uh, uh, balance sheet and the treasurer's report. So when I go into something like the treasurer's report here and I go to columns, Notice I've got a column over here called previous year. So if I add previous year, it's going to show me the previous year to date total for the same period that I choose here, report period, in the previous year based on what I select. So if I'm choosing July 2023, it's going to show me in the previous year column July totals through um, July 2022. Okay. But if I change it to another accounting year the previous year, if I chose 21 for the accounting year, it would be then the previous year would be for 2020. I, I think it makes sense if you, if you kind of just think about it for a minute. Under the balance sheet, we do also have the monthly and the annual comparative. So then, you know, again, when we go to columns on there, notice it says previous year to date balance or over on the left under the available columns, we've got previous period balance. So if I'm choosing, say, a monthly comparative, the columns will change. So see, it says previous period as opposed to previous year to date. So again, that's the closest we have to being able to include multiple accounting year information on one report. Otherwise, typically those accounting reports have to be run separately and runs and compared side by side. There's one and only one report that allows you to include multiple years of information and that's the budget report. So when we go up to our budget report, I can run it for from one starting accounting year to another and it will include the budget figures for, you know, whatever years are included in that date range. So if I backdate it say now to say 21, leaving it as presentation, not in checking amount or percent differences. But here now, notice it will show budget for one year 23, 22, and 21. But that's it. There's no actuals on this report. Okay, I need to run the treasurer's report for the actual to see that, and that does not allow me to cross years. Okay. If we want to be able to compare different accounting periods, they typically have to be reprinted side by, printed separately and compared side by side. Again, the transaction journal is the only one that allows you to save selections as a default. And with just a couple minutes left, one of the things is, you know, based on your selections, like I said, reports will remember things like column selections that you have. It won't. It'll remember things like accounts with zero balances. 
Um, but things like period will always default back to the current month that we're in. Fund won't be saved, say here, under our treasurer's report. Okay. Uh, columns will be selected. Custom groups won't be remembered. So for all intents and purposes, folks, other than the columns and the information that you're wanting to, the column information you're wanting to include, there is no way at this time to save custom report layouts in Church Windows Accounting. Okay, you can export them, you know, export the reports themselves, but there's no way to actually save them. And it's something folks ask us to look at all the time, and we do, but we've not added anything at this point yet. Okay, um, but yeah, there's no options in here for saving saving reports other than you know under your reports here and saving custom groups of accounts that your reports that you're running the same every single time. I want to run my say balance sheet fund activity report and treasurer's report, I can then create a report here and call it monthly meeting reports or something, okay? And what it'll do is it, whenever I come into the, uh, click OK, and then when I've gone through this, it'll remember that report and it will allow me to then come in and re-choose that one called uh, monthly meeting reports. So if I go to now reports, I now see one called monthly meeting reports. It just adds the ones I've selected over to the list on the right. And, but it doesn't save those selections that were on those. It just saves the reports I've selected. Okay. So when I go to next, it's always going to bring up the balance sheet, fund activity report, and treasurer's report in that order for me to print. Okay. But folks, again, I'm encouraging each and every one of you to go in and just play with the reports. If you're unclear about, you know, output, what you can get out of it, you know, call us. Um, you know, that, but we want you to kind of gain some confidence about it and go in and just really explore the reports, determine, you know, find what columns work for you, you know. I, I work with, I've been doing, working in the software for 20, 20 plus years. I know it pretty darn well. And so, and many of my other texts do as well. And so if you're unclear about how to get something out, please, you know, pick up the phone and call us or email us about that. And we'll certainly be happy to try our best to see what we can't get out of it for you.